cleaving the great northwest face of Half Dome. In the same way, subsequent smaller glaciers cut away at the base of the valley for two million years, cleaving sheer vertical cliffs and removing all traces of glacial scratch marks. But there was still one glaringly obvious problem with Muir's theory, and arch-enemy geologist Josiah Whitney pounced on it. If glaciers had carved the valley, why was Yosemite uniquely box-shaped and not U-shaped like a classic glacial valley? Whitney attacked Muir's theory and stubbornly declared this square, flat-bottomed valley could only have formed if the bottom had fallen out. Whitney hypothesized that instead of being carved by glaciers, that this was a fault-bounded valley with the valley walls being faults down which the block in between the valley walls has dropped. In Whitney's theory, the flat valley floor would be the top of the down-dropped block. In the quest to unravel the mystery of Yosemite's flat-bottomed canyon, scientists are investigating the valley floor. The kind of sediment that I see in this cut bank are coarse grains, pebbles, and sand, the same kind of rocks and sediment that the present stream can carry. In contrast to that, the deposit I see at my feet is very fine grain. Light, fine grain sediment like this is easily carried by flowing water. But when a river hits a body of still water, its energy levels slump and it dumps its load. This is the kind of sediment that we would expect to see on the floor of a lake. Further research has found similar strange sediments all over Yosemite. It's proof that 10,000 years ago, an ancient lake drowned this entire valley. Starting at the head of the canyon, it stretched for five miles through the landscape. But it was a mystery how Lake Yosemite had formed. Scientists scoured the valley looking for answers, and near the base of El Capitan at the farthest end of the valley, they stumbled upon an insignificant looking ridge. It's an important clue to how Lake Yosemite and the valley formed. This mound is made of an unusual collection of rocks, and it runs from one side of the valley to the other. Given this arc of a ridge is just down from El Cap, one might expect that it could have been caused from a rock fall. But if you look around, that's not the case. Clearly, even in this local area, we have rocks that came from at least three different places, no doubt, up the valley. This pink rock came from one portion of the valley. This gray granite came from another place. And this particular one, we can see the distinctive feldspars associated with the Cathedral Peaks granite. This strange distribution of rocks means that the ridge could not have formed from a catastrophic rock fall. Something else, just as epic, must have created it. This is a glacial moraine, the remnants of a glacier which once filled the valley. It's the conclusive evidence Muir had hoped for. Moraines form as glacial ice rips fragments of rock from the valley walls, carries them like a conveyor belt several miles downstream, and dumps the rubble at the mouth of the glacier. Scientists realize this ridge was also key to solving the mystery of how Lake Yosemite and the flat-bottomed valley floor formed. It wasn't just a moraine, it was a giant dam. It's two and a half million years ago, and glaciers grind through the valley. 10,000 years ago, the temperature rises and the glacier retreats. A huge moraine is dumped at the valley mouth, damming back the icy meltwater. The entire valley floods, creating an enormous Lake Yosemite. Mountain streams spill into this still water and dump ton after ton of fine sediment the lake chokes with silt, creating Yosemite's distinctive flat-bottomed valley floor. 
We know from seismic evidence collected in the 1930s that it's 2,000 feet thick. That's enough sediment to cover New York City by a foot. And beneath this lake of sediment, they found the evidence that had always eluded Muir, a U-shaped basin, the hallmark of a classic glacial valley. It was indisputable evidence that Muir's intuitive observations and seemingly far-fetched theory were correct. And the final nail in the coffin for Whitney's theory of a cataclysmic rifting valley. Scientists trying to understand how the steep cliffs and flat bottom valley formed have found. Scratch marks, evidence that the sheer cliffs were carved by glaciers. And a glacial moraine, proof that an ancient Lake Yosemite filled with sediment and created the flat valley floor. For over two million years, the glaciers whittle away at Yosemite. Then 10,000 years ago, the glaciers retreat for good leaving the one mile wide canyon we know today. But strange, dangerous forces are still exerting their powers on Yosemite's landscape with catastrophic consequences. Yosemite Valley has been sculpted by torrential water and thick slabs of ice, but today, another hidden force is shaping this magnificent landscape. It's 6.52 p.m., July 10th, 1996. Yosemite is hit by a catastrophic rockfall. Within minutes, a huge dust cloud of pulverized rock engulfs the valley. News spreads that Happy Isles, the busiest trail in the valley, has been decimated. Yosemite is in a state of emergency. When I got here, the devastation was really in full force. I saw trees that were just everywhere. There were ambulances and chaos just was everywhere. People were running around screaming, and the whole area looked like a bomb had gone off. 80,000 tons of rock had suddenly dislodged from the cliff face. The weight of 1,600 trucks basically fell down. It hit and then exploded and they created a wind blast. As strong as a tornado, the wind blast uprooted trees a half mile away from the impact zone. We can have about 3,000 people go up and down that trail in one day. And so we did not know how many people were trapped under the trees. And tragically, a young man was pinned by a tree and was killed and a young woman was trapped under a tree and is paralyzed. A deadly, mysterious force is continually at work in Yosemite, causing the surface layers of the ultra-tough Yosemite granite to peel away in huge chunks. One large rockfall occurs every week in the park, and yet up to four million people visit Yosemite each year, getting perilously close to these potentially unstable cliffs. To discover what's causing Yosemite's incredibly tough granite to fall down, researchers have dotted vibration sensors and solar-powered seismic stations all over Yosemite's cliffs, enabling them to listen to the rocks. This computer allows me to see what's going on all the time. For example, if I throw this rock at the cliff over there, I just created a mini rock fall. And take a look. And these spikes are the rock hitting the cliff and then tumbling down. This is a mini rock fall that happened right here. So the station will pick up rock falls that happen that are small right here, but it'll pick up larger ones in other places. This seismic listening device has pinpointed a recent rock fall behind Half Dome. It's a chance for Valerie Zimmer to investigate why Yosemite's rocks are falling down and all the evidence indicates another cataclysmic event has occurred. Oh, look at this. All these trees have been knocked over like they're toothpicks. These rocks range from the size of a house to just dust. Analysis of the seismic data shows this was a massive rock fall, one of the biggest in the last 20 years. 
It shook the ground so hard it was the equivalent of a magnitude 2.4 earthquake. If you look up on that mountain, the amount of rocks that came down, you know, you look up high, it doesn't look like a big area, but it's deceivingly large. It's probably the size of maybe 40 houses altogether. Strangely, immediately above the scarred rock face, a new dome is forming. Mysterious domes are forming all over the valley. The most famous, Half Dome. Glaciers cleaved its vertical face, but its dome top has been shrouded in mystery. A strange underlying force is sculpting these peaks into domes, causing the rocks to tumble down. North of Yosemite, on the dome at Olmsted Point, it's possible to get close enough to investigate why the surface layers of granite are shattering. These domes are all over the place. I see these layers running parallel to the surface. They're almost like the layers of an onion. And the layers are starting to peel off. In fact, look right here. This one is coming apart. The outer surface of the rock has fractured into layers, running over the summit and down the sides of the dome. These are weaknesses in the rock. It's obvious that there must be some sort of force that's causing the rock to break in this way and peel apart like an onion. The only force capable of fracturing the ultra-tough Yosemite granite like this originates deep within the Earth. 100 million years ago, the Yosemite granite is beginning to form. Submerged beneath two miles of volcanic rock, it's squashed and squeezed from every direction. Over the next 40 million years, the volcanic roof erodes away. The immense downward pressure is removed, leaving these titanic forces out of balance. The surface of the exposed Yosemite granite is now an avenue through which this pent-up pressure can be released. Granite is still being squeezed from the sides and from the bottom, but at the surface it's free to move. What happens is these layers start to open up parallel to the surface. The release of this ancient pressure causes the surface of the granite to fracture into onion layers, which then peel away. And so when the tops of those mountains fall off, you're left with rounded domes. But it's not just the granite peaks that are affected. It's the cliffs, too. These layers will also form if the ground surface is vertical, like a cliff, creating vertical fractures alongside the cliff. These vertical fractures allow the rock to then slide out and create rock falls. And this is one of the major contributing factors to rock falls in Yosemite. Yosemite's catastrophic rock falls are the legacy of its prehistoric birth beneath the earth 100 million years ago. The gradual release of this ancient pent-up pressure has created an untamed and dynamic landscape. Rockfall is a natural process and is part of the ongoing evolution of Yosemite National Park. I always get a little bit tickled when people ask me questions like, what are you going to do to prevent future rockfalls? It's a constant reminder that this is a wild place and that there's nothing we can do or should do to tame it in any way, shape, or form, but it's something that after I'm long gone will continue to happen. For the last 150 years, scientists have been figuring out how this magnificent valley forms.